All right, all right, guys. It is time for your official 2019-2020 weather decoded winter forecast. And I'm going to be unveiling what this map means here in a second. I'm also going to give you your snowfall, temperature, and precipitation outlook. And I'm also going to go over the polar vortex and blizzard potential this winter. Now, there's been some big changes, so we'll go over those in a second. But before we begin, click that subscribe button because I'll be releasing more in-depth videos on how I put this winter forecast together. We're going to kind of keep this one straightforward and kind of to the point. Also guys, share this with a friend, family member. We also have a contest come up here in a minute, so stay tuned for that. So the first map we're gonna look at here is the winter overview, and this is kind of a snapshot of the winter for the United States. Now, the first area we're gonna look at is the Northwestern United States, where I'm forecasting mild conditions. There's lots of warm sea surface temperatures to the west, and there's gonna be some decent ridging that occurs. So I think there's gonna be very mild conditions for the most part in that region and kind of average to slightly below average precipitation. The warmest and driest of the winter is gonna end up in the southwestern United States this winter, as there's gonna be lots of ridging based off our analogs and patterns that are gonna set up this winter. As we head towards the Rockies, there's gonna be a lot of early snows in this region, potentially a late season snow, uh, you know, a train as well. But for the most part, I think your earliest snow is gonna be the best here in the Rockies. Uh, but overall, it's going to be slightly above average snowfall, especially as you head towards Montana. But the west is going to start to warm up as we get into the winter. In the southeastern United States, I'm forecasting mild conditions, kind of similar to the northwestern United States, slightly above average temperatures and average precipitation. The area we're going to want to watch, one of the areas, is the central United States where I have the winter battle zone. Now, I know a lot of people put it kind of farther east. But this winter, I'm putting it a little bit further west and right in the central of the United States. Because of the Arctic Oscillation, the QBO, the polar vortex, I do think that you're going to have Arctic outbreaks that extend a little bit farther west. And that's going to help set up a very strong temperature zone, especially as we head towards near and east of the Rockies. So there's going to be a lot of temperature swings. Usually with these Enzo neutral type winters, we rely on other things like snowpack, you know, the polar vortex, Arctic Oscillation. NAO and stuff like that and that's going to cause a lot of temperature swings especially in the central US so mixed precipitation temperature swings right in the middle as we head towards the northern United States this is going to be the one of the areas that has the worst of the winter the Arctic attack zone that's going to be you know essentially where the coldest and snowiest air is going to be this winter some areas in here have actually received near average snowfall and it's not even winter yet so pretty incredible i expect that pattern to be continuous on and off throughout the winter as we head towards the midwest this is where the coldest air is going to be it's kind of especially right in this region right here where crushing cold is going to occur you know decided to have a little fun with, with some of these names here and really i think your historic cold is going to be a lot more likely this winter especially as you head towards wisconsin minnesota north dakota potentially some historic arctic outbreaks as we head towards the southeastern united states towards the mid-atlantic area and the tennessee regions wet and wild so i'm really forecasting average to slightly below average temperatures but it's going to be wetter than average now because of some of these teleconnections these arctic oscillations stuff we look at there's going to be a higher than likely chance that we're going to see some very cold air that does extend into the Gulf. Some Arctic outbreaks. Again, they're not going to be always hitting this area, but when they do, you're going to have a heightened chance for snowfall uh, more than usual winters with this uh, pattern. So there's going to be some snowfall for that area, even though it's going to be mostly wet. I'd say above average chance for some snowfall. Now, as we head towards the Ohio Valley region in the interior northeast, this is another area that I think the worst of winter is going to set up. I'm forecasting this area to be the best area for blizzards this winter. There's going to be a couple big ones. There's a lot of warm air sitting out here near the uh, Atlantic coast, warm sea surface temperatures. That's going to help cause potentially some rapid cyclogenesis. There's going to be a temperature gradient with these low pressure systems that track up the east coast. With when you can get some very cold air that comes down and kind of interacts with this, you're going to get some blizzards, some pretty potentially some big ones out here as you head towards the uh, northeastern United States. And when we can get cold enough air to extend to the east, it's been a little bit of struggle so far. I think that's going to pick up as we head towards the winter. You're going to get some snowfall as far east as 
the east coast and this is the area i have snowy and slick on so you know while the snow threat will be a little bit lower here it's still going to be above average and it's going to be pretty slick you're going to get some pretty good snowfall in that area this winter so that is going to be the overview now before we get to the second half where we go more in detail about the snowfall and all that we have a contest comment below how many inches of snow will kansas city missouri receive between december 1st and march 1st the winner will receive an 11 by 14 inch sign matted print by me of this photo that i took out in northeast nebraska back in 2014 pretty crazy site look kind of like the wizard of oz so comment below also follow snowbrains it's kind of a cool website i found the other day snowbrains.com or snowbrains on facebook they produce uh you know lots of articles about weather information skiing information snowboarding information this is kind of uh directed towards skiers and snowboarders especially if you live in the uh, west coast of the united states they produce some pretty cool material so go give them a follow and uh, we will get right into the second half of this video so what we're looking at here is the temperature outlook now I'm forecasting above average temperatures for the, I would say, western you know quarter of the United States, especially as you head towards the coast here, with uh, where there's going to be a lot of ridging that occurs this winter. There's a, a, a lot of eastern Pacific warmth, and I think you're going to get some ridging. It kind of curves back a little bit, and then also some ridging in the southeastern United States. And uh, that's going to cause above average temperatures, not terribly above average, but one or two degrees above average. So slightly to moderately above average temperatures kind of in between that with some temperature swings. And then obviously in the central U.S. will be a lot of temperature swings uh, with this type of pattern. As you get towards uh, the north central United States, this is where the worst of the winter is going to be in terms of temperatures where I forecast five degrees below average for this region. So potentially a couple of historic outbreaks. I do believe that you're going to set records at least once or twice in this region. And again, going to be very, very cold. This is the first time I've gone this extreme in all the winter forecasts that I've uh, produced over the past several years. So this is uh, very cold in that region. I've also extended the cold further west with this pattern. I believe the QBO, the the uh, polar vortex, the Arctic Oscillation, and some other things, the snowpack. I think that's going to allow for a little bit colder air to come in right in the center of the continent here. And, you know, that's going to include Montana, Wyoming, parts of Nebraska, and maybe as far uh, west as Washington, parts of Washington. So I've actually extended that farther to the west. And then it extends out to the eastern seaboard. But there is some uh, uncertainty with some... Uh, warmer conditions potentially ridging that could kind of push in a little bit to uh, the uh, northeastern united states but for the most part i do think that you're going to end up below average in the northeastern united states the uh, biggest question would be parts of maine in that area but nonetheless there's going to be some pretty powerful cold uh, breaks that move through this region so that's the temperature outlook now how about the precipitation well the precipitation, I mean, really is kind of overlapping the coldest weather. So very interesting there. Now, there is some uncertainty within this region right here. There's, you know, our analogs and uh, the patterns that we were looking at really looks favorable for the northern U.S. to see above average precipitation. Obviously, if you put the cold air over that, a lot of that's going to be snow. And then uh, there's a lot of uh, strong signals that could indicate that this area right here, I'm forecasting this area, towards the Ohio Valley and the interior northeastern United States to be much above average. We're talking about 50% or so above average precipitation. So you take your precipitation, whoops, get rid of that real quick. Uh, let's see here. So you take your precipitation and you essentially add 50% to it. So, you know, if you have 10 inches for the year, you would add 50%, which is five inches. So that's kind of how you use this uh, little uh, tool down here. Now the you know, West Coast, I think, is going, you know, I'm forecasting below average for the most part, especially as you head towards the Southwest, towards California. There's going to be some split flow in this region. There's going to be some ridging that really occurs in this region. And that's going to cause, you know, most of the storm track to kind of veer off to the north and uh, as well down here. And, and you're going to get some precipitation farther east for the most part. Yeah, I just don't think the uh, southwestern United States is going to end up anything near above average. So I'm going to put that area below average for the most part. 
about 30% or so. The lighter shades are about 10 to 20%. And then average kind of in between this region right here. Again, there's a little bit more uncertainty kind of within this region right here. Uh, but for the most part, average to slightly above average. So that's your precipitation outlook. Now, how about your snowfall outlook? This is what I'm thinking for snowfall. So you kind of take your average snowfall and then you add your percentages. So this is kind of that works the same way. The blues obviously are going to be the positives and the browns are going to be the negatives. So I'm forecasting below average snowfall for this region. I extend this a little bit farther to the north because of the warm air that I do believe will sneak into the northwestern United States. Obviously not everyone gets snow here. This is obviously accounting for the above uh, you know, the uh, the elevations farther above. Okay, so that's going to be that. And then uh, snowfall is going to generally be below or above average for the northeastern quadrant of the United States, probably half of the United States, with, uh, you know, generally 25% in that region. And, there, and I've actually extended this a little bit farther to the southeast to account for those cold temperatures. So you're kind of overlapping those cold temperatures onto the precipitation. Uh, above average here in the north central United States and then also here in the uh, Ohio Valley region and your maximum area here where you could see 50 to 75 percent above average right in the interior northeast Great Lakes region in Ohio Valley region. The Great Lakes region are slightly above average uh, the uh, temperatures the uh, lake temperatures slightly above average. So that could enhance the lake effect snow a little bit more this winter, especially with that northwest uh, surface flow that we're going to see a lot this winter. So I believe above average lake effect snow as well in that region. That's why I got that area 50 to 75 percent above average. And then obviously the folks in the northeast around 25 percent, maybe 50 percent above average in some areas. Uh, you know, I just wanted to make this a little more clear. This is your average snowfall right here. This is your key. So that's your average snowfall generally in your region. Obviously, it's going to kind of vary just a little bit, especially locally. This is kind of an average for the most part. And you can use this map, and then you can just kind of average your out your uh, snowfall, and then you can add, you know, 50% if you live in this area. So I'm kind of overlapping that previous snowfall map. So I'm forecasting 75% in this area. So you kind of look at your key, and then you add on, you know, if it says plus, or you subtract if it says negative. So obviously... The southwestern United States is going to be a little bit below average, and then the northeastern half, it's going to be above average. So you can kind of use that. You can pause this video and use that as a reference. And then the blizzometer index is going to have a little fun with this one as well. That's essentially the same thing, but it's measuring blizzard potential. So what's your chances of a blizzard this winter? The yellow area is a 20% chance or greater, now about a 20% chance. And then as you go all the way up to the purple area here, this is a four out of five chance. So basically an 80% chance that you're going to see blizzard conditions, you know, for an hour or more. Okay, so four out of five chance. So that's what I got going pretty aggressive here in the northeastern United States and in the north central United States as well. Everywhere else, kind of a 50 to 60% chance of a blizzard. Now, the polar vortex index, just decided to have a little fun here. What's the odds of the polar vortex? This is a chance of out of five here. One out of five through five out of five. And I got this area up here at four out of five. So basically an 80% chance that you're going to see the polar vortex track into this region uh, this winter. So you're going to have a closed off polar air mass that comes into this region at least once this winter. And that's what I'm forecasting with this pattern. Obviously, areas around this. There's at least a one out of five, so a 20% chance. As you get towards the central United States, you near that red line for the most part. So that's the polar vortex index. Here's a common pattern that'll set up this winter. This is something you're going to see a lot, and this you're already seeing it. This is actually a snapshot of one in November. You're going to see a lot of ridging, and some ridging out in uh, towards the Gulf of Alaska that pinches into the Arctic. Now, when that happens, that's when your best bet of a polar vortex that'll plunge to the south, or at least some very cold air like you see here. So uh, these are height anomalies, essentially. So the red area is gonna be kind of warmer and uh, drier, especially underneath. And uh, your troughs are gonna be typically or colder and stormier, especially kind of out ahead of them. And this is a stormy, very cold, active period, especially if you live in the northeastern United States. Now, this is not going to be the only look. And obviously, you have some clippers behind it sometimes. But this is going to be something you see kind of averaging out this winter. Here's a general storm track that you're going to see a lot. Imagine this a little bit further to the east. 
But you got a snowstorm in kind of in the northwestern United or the north central United States that tracks off to the Ohio Valley region and uh, then tracks off into Canada. This is a common storm track that I do think you're going to see quite a lot this winter with a very high pressure and cold air that sets in between or I mean behind it with very cold stiff winds. This is a common look that I think you'll see this winter, but I do think that you'll also see these a little bit farther to the southeast, especially as we get into the brunt of winter, especially as we head towards January and February. That's the general storm track. That's the general look to this winter. Again, enter the contest below. How many inches of snow will Kansas City, Missouri receive between December 1st and March 1st? Put your guess in the comments. A winner will receive an 11 by 14 inch sign matted print of this image I took out in Northeast Nebraska back in 2014. Go ahead and give Snow Brains a follow. Uh, they put out some pretty awesome content, especially if you're a ski or a snowboarder. Subscribe if you want daily forecast updates. I'm also going to be releasing more in depth videos for these winter forecasts and how I put this together. And if you like this video, share this with a friend or a family member, someone that would find this useful. And hope you have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this winter forecast, and we'll see you soon.